Hello. We're in the season of Eastertide. And one of the great things about Eastertide is that we are able to listen in the liturgy to some fantastic gospel passages, some of the most beautiful in the whole of the New Testament, which recount about the ways in which Jesus appeared to his disciples and ways in which they encountered him. It's a really important season, not because, just because of the centrality of Easter itself, but also because whenever we encounter Jesus today, it's the risen Christ that we're encountering. That's the state that he is in. And therefore, these 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension are like a model of how we might relate to Jesus. And so those gospel passages help us to understand where and how we might be able to meet him. One of the other advantages is the many great artworks down the centuries which have sought to portray the gospel passages of this season. And I'd like to make some videos which are about some of those great works of art. Today, ahead of the third Sunday of Eastertide, which features the road to Emmaus as the gospel passage, I'd like to choose the famous Supper at Emmaus, which is by Caravaggio and hangs in the National Gallery in London. First of all, let's look at this beautiful painting. It's important for us, first of all, just when we look at a painting, just to enjoy it and to ask ourselves what we like about it. Is there anything we don't like so much about it? Is there anything that captures our attention? Is there anything which we wonder about? Any questions that we have that would like to be answered? Do we know who all the characters are or we're not sure? So let's just take a some time just to contemplate the painting and to enjoy it with perhaps those kind of questions in mind. Once we've contemplated a painting, it's quite good to delve a little bit into the history of it and also the technical aspects to try and understand what's happening. So the artist here is Michelangelo Merisi, also called Caravaggio. He was born in, in Milan in 1571 and this painting comes from 1601. So it's amazing, he's only 30 years of age if he is that by the time he paints this. And it's amazing that at such a young age he's able to master such a, a technical discipline and also to be able to uh, capture so much of the emotional depth of this scene as well. It's part of a series of three paintings which were commissioned by the Mattei brothers, bankers in Rome, and they were commissioned in light of some work which he had done which had made him really famous to churches in Rome which he had painted part of, the, one of the chapels in each the San Luis de Falls, which is near Piazza Navona, which he painted only a year before this three cycle, three painting cycle of the life and death of St. Matthew. And then subsequent to that, Santa Maria del Popolo, which tells of the life and the death of St. Peter and St. Paul. So he'd become famous and he was getting these kind of commissions. Caravaggio is well known for several things. One is his use of light and darkness, light and shade, the famous chiaroscuro. And in this painting we see how the light is flooding in a particular way from a particular light source and somewhere to the left of the painting. And in fact, he's able to capture some of the drama through the use of light and darkness. In fact, it's been said that Caravaggio's paintings are almost like paintings of a play of what is taking place and may have referred to some of the plays which he, he had seen when he was growing up in his native Milan, eh, the passion plays and the reenactments of the gospel. So there's that real sense of drama within this as well. He's also very well known for painting in a 3D kind of manner. Not only is he able to paint in a way which uses perspective, which had been current for many centuries, but he is the one who tries to overcome the distance between the, pain, the painting and the person viewing the painting. And he does this in several ways. One most famous one is the bowl of fruit, which is on the table. He's a real virtuoso at painting fruit and still life. But the, the fact that it's over the edge of the table and the shadow is cast onto the table, 
it, it's almost as if the fruit bowl is going to fall off the table and you could jump forward and catch it. So it's a kind of a trick to try to draw us in to the painting. The same goes with the kind of foreshortening of some of the, the characters and the limbs of the characters which kind of draw us in. And because there's that kind of open space in the table, it's a wee bit like Rublev's famous icon of the Trinity, where there's a space left for us at the table, if you like. So everything is trying to kind of draw us into the painting. What's really important, I think, and, and helpful when we look at a religious painting is to ask ourselves, kind of, where would I be in this painting? If, especially if I'm drawn into it, do I want to be part of the painting? Where would I sit? Where would I position myself? And or we could look at the different characters in the painting and ask who they are and whether I am able to be um, kind of similar to one of those or to kind of identify myself with one of the characters. So first of all, we can focus upon Jesus himself. He's harder to identify with, with I suppose, but it's still worth pondering that uh, figure as he's been painted. He is very dramatic. It's right at the moment in which he has revealed his identity through the breaking of bread as he sits with those two disciples at supper. And, and what this painting is also famous for is the fact that Jesus is painted beardless. And later a biographer of Caravaggio it was quite critical of him for doing this. But it, that's quite strange because if you think about it, Michelangelo, for example, had painted a beardless Jesus at the Last Supper, or the, sorry, the Last Judgment, which is on the wall of the Sistine Chapel. So it wasn't so unusual, it would have been well known. Maybe Caravaggio is having a kind of a nod to that painting, that famous painting. It could also be the, the fact of the concealment of Jesus, who wasn't recognised by the disciples until the breaking of bread. And therefore he's kind of in a, an unfamiliar um, way of being with, without the beard. Or it might be to underline the youthfulness of Christ, that Jesus, risen from the dead, will be forever young. We're not sure, but there's certainly a, a great vitality about this portrait of Jesus by Caravaggio. The other three characters are maybe easier to identify with, and this is where we can start to think in a more spiritual way for ourselves. The first character we could point out is the innkeeper, or the waiter. He is passing by. And so Jesus is revealing his true identity. And again, the light is showing that, that the, it's a kind of a light bulb moment where he's showing who he truly is. But the innkeeper is completely oblivious. In fact, again, using the light and the shadow, Caravaggio has shown his face in shadow. So he's kind of still in darkness. He's not been illuminated yet. And this may represent a part of the spiritual life or a state of the spiritual life in which we're just not aware We've not come to accept Jesus. We don't really know who he is. Or it might be that even though kind of in our head we know who he is, but we've not really accepted him into our hearts. And we're kind of blind. We don't see him in the, those around us, in the, the poorest, the, the beggar we might meet in the street, or the person in our own household that we have to care for. We, we don't recognise him in the scriptures or in the sacraments. Eh, that might be us. We're kind of passing by on the other side, as it were. Uh, oblivious to the true presence of Jesus in our midst. The other two characters uh, represent two other kind of part states of the spiritual life, I think. The first is the man to the left of the painting. He is starting to recognise Jesus and he's got his, his arms on the arms of the chair and he's standing up, he's coming to a realisation that this is Jesus is his true identity. And again, Caravaggio's painted this very cleverly because his elbow, the, the coat has been torn, but it's almost as if he could be, his elbow's kind of jutting out of the painting and it's the, the canvas which has been torn. That's a way in which he again kind of draws us into the picture. But it's that sense of coming to an understanding, coming to belief. And that may be where we are. We are on the road. We, we are disciples, but we're Kind of maybe in the early stages of not giving ourselves fully to Jesus or we don't fully recognise him or understand him. We're on the way and maybe that's uh, where we are. But maybe it's the third character, the one to the right of the painting. He again has his arms outstretched and therefore kind of pointing towards us uh, out of the canvas, if you like. He might in that way represent the one who is surprised at the, the, at the identity of Jesus. But it's almost like he's foreshadowing Peter, 
the one who's going to be prepared to stretch his arms out on the cross and to give his life. Because this man in the painting is someone who's already very much on the road to the discipleship. He is a disciple. And that's shown by a beautiful detail. He has a scallop shell on his chest, as you'll see. And that is the traditional symbol of the pilgrim. And so he's already on pilgrimage. He's already opened his arms to welcome Jesus. He's perhaps even ready already to die for Jesus. And maybe that's what we are, where we are. It may be what we aspire to. And as we look a final time at this painting, we might be able to reflect upon that. Where am I in this painting? Where do I fit? Where do I stand in this painting? Where would I like to be and where do I feel most comfortable? And which of the characters am I? Am I the one who's oblivious? The one who's beginning to come to a realisation and a belief in Jesus? Or am I already a disciple, a pilgrim on the road to discipleship in Jesus? Food for thought, I hope, this day as we prepare for the third Sunday of Eastertide.